Hi, Irish Griffith, Code Enforcement Officer here. Wanted to take a moment and discuss with you the gun range issue that has been kind of slowly building up over the years and that we're trying to get resolved. So back um, in January, I believe it was, we had a meeting. You can view that video on the, the BCM website. But to kind of recap it, we had received some complaints about potential, um, some potential safety concerns, some noise complaints, a lot of noise complaints. So as part of my due diligence of my job, I got copies of all the police reports, uh, almost all of them exclusively dated to 2004 or earlier. The ones since uh, only pertained to two actual bullets found, nothing definitively tied back to the range. However, any, any bullet straying from somewhere is something we definitely want to make sure is not coming from the range. So I've been working with the president and the two vice presidents of the gun range to try and come to some sort of understanding as to what may be happening if there are any projectiles leaving the range um, and what, if anything, we can do regarding the noise. So we had that meeting. Um, there were a lot of options that were discussed. We're very thankful that the the members of the club have been cooperative and just trying to be good neighbors because the reality is the Title 30A main law does not allow us to put any restrictions on a previously existing gun range because this gun range has been in existence for so long unless they make a change that is a major change which under court history so far really only pertains to adding a shooting lane, then they are grandfathered and we can't backdate any noise ordinances or any ordinances that we might design in the future to this, to this range unless they make those changes. However, they know that they want to be good neighbors and of their own choice, they are looking into some options that were discussed at the meeting. Um, back in early March, I received an email after one of the club meetings that I unfortunately was not able to attend, their club meetings and our planning board meetings tend to happen at the same time. So the results of that meeting after the gun range meeting, their club decided to go ahead and install cameras at the range, um, on the entrance to the range, so that they are aware when people are coming and going. So God forbid there is any sort of uh, stray bullet issues, the police will be able to determine if there was even anybody at the range at that time. They're going to update the gate access system so that way it'll record individual radio frequency swipes rather than just right now they have a code for the club members. Um, each individual club member will have a card so if God forbid something does happen they can figure out who was at the range at that time. Um, so they're not going to put sign-in sheets in the buildings for sign-in because they're going to work on that instead. The high-tech issues, but high-tech solution is a much better option. So they're going to work on those things, and they did agree to have Craig Gary from Inland Fisheries and Wildlife come in and do the uh, NRA inspection. And he said they meet or exceed all safety requirements, and compared to other ranges that they, he has visited, they get an above average rating from a safety standpoint. So they did send me um, some information out of the uh, report. So of course, as had already been stated, the current range is a safe range. Um, the, because of the safety concerns being something that Craig didn't feel like was really anything that could be happening from there, um, he did go ahead and address the potential resolutions for noise issues. Now, to recap, for those of you that have not seen the gun range meeting, uh, Craig Gary works for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and one of the things that he does is he travels throughout the state and he does range safety inspections, and he uses the National Rifle Association's evaluation methods. Um, he's been doing this for quite some time, has done it for many, many ranges, and people do utilize his services for noise complaint issues as well as safety issues. 
So he's well versed in all of the things that we're facing here in the town of Berwick and that our neighbors in North Berwick have been concerned with. So in the regards to the range standards here and what what issues we could be facing, of course, Title 30A says that they're covered, they don't have to do anything. That being said, he is recommending planting firs in the ravine beyond the firing berms because what he's seeing there for growth matches what the complaints have been in regards to the noise growing over time. Something that didn't quite add up is that the, the complaints at the meeting were that the noise has become so excessive over the last five to ten years, but based on the conversations with the gun club, there has been a, a significant growth in the gun club, but most of that membership is going to the Sanford range rather than coming here to the Berwick range. There's been very minimal increase in the number of people using the Berwick range. So it didn't really add up. So Craig looked at that information and he looked at the growth around there and realized that a lot of the old growth, because you're looking at um, you know, your, your softer trees, so to speak, they, they tend to lose the bottom limbs as they get taller. And what he believes is happening is that the sound may be traveling under the ground cover height provided by the trees at this point in time and into the ravine and then echoing throughout the entire neighborhood, basically. Um, he believes that if they planted some, um, some fir trees, some something for some low growth, that it would dampen the noise. Additionally, any low growth will help prevent any concern or should prevent any additional concern about any shots being misfired because the more growth around the range, the less likely anything is to travel noise or projectiles outside of the range. That having been said, again, although we have nothing tracing back to the range uh, for safety issues and the reports basically confirm that there's very, it's highly, highly unlikely unless somebody is shooting directly in the air, like Yosemite Sam style, uh, that anything should be leaving the range. But hopefully, you know, we can find some way to, to eliminate some of the noise complaints, which will make it much nicer for everybody. Um, I do want to let everybody know in the neighborhood, in case you hear anything, they do have a lovely green tractor that they're going to be using because springtime is their annual maintenance time for their berms. Um, as the, the snow thaws, this is a conversation I've had with them, as the snow thaws and runoff melts and everything, they like to just go ahead in and they like to just top off their berms and make sure everything is as high as they can make it. Um, they're trying to be above and beyond what is required because they, again, safety is their number one priority. Um, I think that's about all I have at this time. We will be passing some information back and forth with them in regards to what they're going to do vegetation-wise uh, going down the road. And if, as we come up with any potential solutions, we're going to notify them and let them do their research, their homework. But I'm trying to assist with that. And as always, if you have any concerns or complaints for this particular issue, I strongly recommend you use my email, which is code at berwickmain.org. And Maine is spelled out, so code, not codes, code at berwickmain.org. And that way I can get back to you and we can have our record for our files. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.